Hello. Hello, Kirsty McCall? Yes. Hi, my name is Steve Harris. Hi, Steve. Hi. Um, I guess I finally caught up with you. Yes. Yeah, sorry about the, the flub yesterday. Have you interviewed or uh, neglected to give me your phone number? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I was sitting by the phone for an hour yesterday <laughs> waiting for somebody to call. Oh, dear. Yeah, so uh, anyway, 24-hour uh, delay, but here we are. Oh, well, here we are. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so sorry about the whole thing. And, um, Don't worry. I, I, I am basically a, a, an interpreter, and mm -hmm. I've been provided with a list of questions here. Okay. So if there are any inconsistencies, uh, I apologize. Uh, okay. Um, now, this, this uh, great... Uh, just hold on. Let me just turn the TV down a minute. Hold on. Sure. Oh. That's it. Right, I'm all yours. Okay. Um, this is, a, I guess, a, a greatest hits album or a, or a best of Kirstie McCall album that just, yeah. just released. Um, how exactly did uh, this happen? What sort of circumstances lead it up to this uh, release? Well, it was, um, it, basically, I got a chance to um, to be in charge of it because normally, um, once you had things released, you don't really own the rights anymore and the record companies can do what they like. But because I've been with a lot of different labels, um, Virgin offered, Virgin in England offered to, you know, to license a lot of the old tracks that were on different uh, labels onto this one project, but um, basically I got to choose all the tracks that went on it, and it seemed about a good, you know, it seemed a good time to do it because it was sort of marking 15 years worth of my work. Oh, I see. What, what, what exactly uh, is, the, uh, is the mark there? I mean, what, what was your first single or first song? The first single I had out was called They Don't Know. Oh, the, the one that Tracy Ullman eventually... Yeah, mm -hmm. and that, I had that out in 79. Mm -hmm. And then I recorded a couple of new songs for this album as well. There's a song called Caroline, which is a new song. And also I did a duet with Evan Dando mm -hmm. from the Lemonheads right. on Perfect Day, which is a Lou Reed song. Mm -hmm. And those two are new tracks for it. Uh-huh. I see. Um, the interviewer is wondering, after 15 years... Um I guess this gives you a chance to sort of look back over your career. Um, what, do you, what do you have to say about that? Well, um, I think the songs stand up pretty well because I was never incredibly, um, you know, I was never, I never belonged to a particular kind of fashion. Um, you know, it wasn't like, oh yes, I was a new romantic or something. Do you know what I mean? I think because I think because I didn't really jump on any bandwagons. Um, that there's a sort of consistency of quality of songwriting and also, and I don't think it sounds too dated, even the early stuff. Yeah, yeah. But also it was a good chance because um, a lot of um, this album will, will hopefully introduce more people to my work because some people know me for, for odd things. They might know me for the single that I did with the Pogues mm -hmm. or, you know, from Walking Down Madison in America, they know that track better. And... Um, a lot of the early stuff was never released anywhere else except England, so mm -hmm. um, it gave people a chance to get hold of that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny you mention that, so the, the, the fact that you never really belonged to any, any sort of movement, because he he mentions here that listening to the collection, the word that comes to mind is like integrity or sincerity. Well, I'm glad he noticed. <laughs> it's very eclectic, musically, uh -huh. but that's because I like to explore different styles. I mean, it's just... Um, I tend to choose the the style of music um, after the, after the main main body of the song is written after the after I you know after I've written the lyrics and the melody it's usually down to the nature of the song what you know that dictates what sort of musical style I use for it. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, I guess your choice of style is not for the novelty of the style as much as for the the substance of the style. Yeah, exactly. And you know, I like. I mean, I like experimenting, and I like trying out different things, and I really, I don't want to make the same record for 20 years, do you know what I mean? Which I think a lot of people seem to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he was a little bit surprised at, uh, at the success of this, uh, commercial success, that is. I guess uh, you, you debuted at 13 on the, on the UK charts. and. Uh, uh, no, it debuted at 6. <laughs> okay, it debuted at 6. Which... And then it went to 11, and now it's number 10. I see. So it's gone up again. Now, is this a degree of commercial success you had expected, or did this hit you? Uh, well, I was hoping, but I mean, you never know, really. And a lot, I've had a lot of bad luck with record companies before, and sometimes, you know, 
I mean, it doesn't matter how hard you work on a project, if they don't promote it, mm-hmm. then it doesn't get the light, you know, it doesn't see the light of day, really. And that's happened to me before, so I was very pleased that, um, that the record company were enthusiastic and, you know, trying uh-huh. to push it. Uh-huh. Here's one of those uh, sort of awkward questions, because like I said, it, it, it asks that you analyze your own, um, your own talents or your own uh, allure, as it were, because uh, in the album, I guess, there are various praises uh, sung by people like Johnny Marr and, and David Byrne and Billy Bragg, Shane McGowan, etc. about you. What exactly do they find appealing about a, uh, a Christian McCall? Um, well, I don't know if they all find the same things appealing, but um, presumably most of them like my voice because they've asked me to sing on their records. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, really, with my voice, I mean, the thing that I'm pleased about is that it's fairly unique. I don't think anybody else sounds like me. And obviously some people can't stand it for that reason, and other people think it's good, you know, but um, those particular people all seem to like it, so that's uh, quite flattering, really, I suppose. Uh-huh, that's a pretty stellar lineup, though. Um, I, I guess th- there are, are there more out there that uh, we should know about who uh, have not exactly lent their, their voice to this particular album? I mean, um, there also, there's also more I see in, in Bono as well, I, I'm given to understand. Yeah, that, but they're all on the sleeve notes. Uh-huh. I mean... Do they have those in Japan? I guess so, yeah. Well, he, he mentioned these names here. So. Yeah. But uh, are, are there other are there other uh, artists that uh, have shown a desire to work with you? That uh, Well, I've worked with lots and lots of different people, but, I mean, the list is a bit... Um, it's probably easier to get a biog if you want from my management company. Uh-huh. Because um, I can't even remember half the people I work with. Uh-huh. <laughs> But you, can you find, like, a, consi- a consistent thread throughout the artists who have wanted to work with you? Do they all share something in common, you think, or do they all come from... Uh, uh well, no, the ones that I've actually ended up working with have all been um, people that I admire, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's a mutual thing. I mean, um, you know, I mean, I was a big Smiths fan before I was asked to, to sing uh, on any Smiths records, and I, then I got a card from Morrissey, yeah and uh, got, you know, got to meet him and Johnny and they asked me to sing on a couple of things they did. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it was obviously, you know, it was a thrill because I was a big fan. But, I mean, you know, I've, I've been lucky with the people who've, who've kind of uh, shown an interest in working with me. So uh, it was good, you know. Well, that, that's a rather fortunate coincidence that you mentioned that because the interviewer thought that that was one of the, the best things you ever did, the uh, work with... Uh, 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 John, Johnny Marr, he says here. Oh, right. Well, I've also, yeah, I mean, I've written a lot of stuff um, over the last sort of three albums. I've written quite a bit with Johnny, but, um, you know, it, I originally sort of sang on the Smith stuff, and then I sang on some Morrissey stuff, and so I've known them for quite a long time, and uh, we're friends, you know. Just out of curiosity, you know what Johnny Marr is up to right now? I'm not 100% sure. I spoke to him a couple of months ago, but um, I'm, I'm writing a track with him, so uh, we might do some more stuff together. Mm-hmm. So he's just he's still plugging plugging along then in, in his own. Oh way. yeah. Uh-huh. Um, the interviewer here says that uh, I guess you have sort of uh, uh, turned your back on the idea of uh, being a pop star or um, you know cr- crass materialism in, in <laughs> pop music. Well, I I don't know. I'm sort of caught, you know. I mean, it's hard, really, because I love making records and I love writing songs and I love working with musicians. But I do find that the business end of the music business rather, you know, depressing, really. Um, Because so much of the music business is controlled by people who have absolutely no interest in music, as far as I can tell. But, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and they all seem to make more money out of it than any of the musicians, (laughs) you know. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I mean, I have to... If you want to make, it, if you want to keep making records, then you have to sort of go out and promote them, and that means doing all the stuff that you know that I don't enjoy quite as much, I suppose. But I like doing shows. Mm-hmm. Your father is quite a well-known figure in the UK, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, he was a very famous um, so- songwriter and folk singer. Do you think that his approach towards the music had any sort of lasting effect on your own approach to it? Well, he was very anti-pop music. He really had no time for it at all, and. Mm-hmm. Um, didn't approve really mm-hmm. and was very disappointed when all his children wanted to become pop singers you know. <laughs> and um but he did actually look i had an album out called kite in in 89 which he actually liked and that was quite a breakthrough really because um i don't think he'd really been that pleased about you know any of us pursuing